Over the years, Marvel has established itself to be the biggest running franchise of all time, beating out Star Wars and having at least 31 movies, all financially successful. I think, actually, The Incredible Hulk, I don't think was very financially successful, but it actually might have been. So don't quote me on that, but but Marvel is still an unstoppable force, and with each movie they come, there is usually a sad death from an important character to behold, so... It is time to stop and talk about five of the saddest deaths in the entire MCU. In number five, we've got Pietro Maximoff from Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, now in the, when you go through this movie, it seems like he's just set up to be like this side villain. So you don't really care about him much. But over time, he becomes more warm upable. Well, I just invented a new word. And not to mention that he reverts to to the Avenger side after seeing how twisted and un, unnatural Ultron is. And when Ultron goes after Hawkeye, who is holding a kid and trying to get him on, he, he ends up sacrificing himself so and takes the bullets. Let me show you. Now, one of the things that makes this scene so difficult for some people is seeing the reaction of Wanda and then seeing her go after Ultron and just destroy him. Seeing everyone's reaction is so sad. Even our own was... I bet there couldn't have been, like, a dry eye in that entire theater when that happened because that is very sad. And it actually gave him a pretty good character arc of going from the snobby kid to go from to go into this role of someone who sacrificed himself for a kid and for Hawkeye. So this easily comes in at number five. Now number four, we've got Queen Ramonda. Her death was in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. So this is another one of those ones that gets really sad. And I'm not a very big fan of Wakanda Forever. This is actually a very hot take, but I prefer Thor Love and Thunder over Wakanda Forever and Multiverse of Madness. And maybe even Shang-Chi. But I really enjoy that movie. Probably more than most people do, but anyway, just her death signifies how much uh, Shuri had lost because she already lost her brother, her father, and just seeing this one solidified it. And also, before before she dies, like I think it's 10 minutes to 20 minutes before, we see her just lose her cool and just realize how much she's lost. It's with the ancestors! I am queen! of the most powerful nation in the world, and my entire family is gone. Have I not given everything? Now, her death was followed by... Um, so, Namor attacks the... Uh, N Namor attacks Wakanda to get uh, the attention, and it ends up killing uh, her mom because... She was trying to get Ironheart for some reason. I can't even remember what it was. That's how forgettable that movie is. So that's what happens. And and she's drowned in it. But not before she is able to save Ironheart. Let me show you. Keep her back! Mother! Bury your dad. Mother! Mourn your losses. You are queen now. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, just seeing the reaction of everyone in the room, it just makes the scene even more sad. I could tell you that I was really sad about this, and I think I may actually have already known this because I'm not a big fan of spoilers because I get them a lot. I knew the entire plot of Endgame and basically everything that happened in it. And same thing with Infinity War. The only thing I didn't know about Infinity War and Endgame that had already happened was just a few other plot points that... That, well, that and also Red Skull. I had no idea he was in it. One of the worst things about him being in the movie was if you combined the pay thing he had for Infinity War and Endgame, it wasn't even close, I don't think, to the amount that he got in Captain America, the first Avenger. I know that one was a smaller role, but I mean, if, if Infinity War and Endgame made so much money, they could have easily compensated and paid him a lot of money, but still. Okay, in third place, we have Yondu. Yondu, to this day, has probably one of my favorite... He's one of my favorite when it comes to the character arcs. He goes from the, the justice abusive person that kidnaps a kid, although, in his defense, he was trying to save him from a homicidal father. And, and he did all that, but still, he thus it, we cannot say he was not a jerk at some times. But in the end, we get to see him make a noble sacrifice for Peter. He may have been your father, boy, but he wasn't your daddy. I'm sorry that didn't do none of it right. I'm damn lucky you, my boy. What? Now, this makes this even more sad when you see Quill's face. This is another experience of not a dry eye in the theater when this happened. This just makes things so sad and emotional. Now, there are some people that have some nitpicks with Volume 2, I will admit, of the movies, not the holiday special I'm counting. This is the worst, but it's still an amazing movie. I find it entirely watchable, but I just really enjoyed this death scene. Now, I probably shouldn't enjoy it this much, but... It's just the way that Yondu sacrifices himself in the character arc he's given is so amazing. In second place, I'm going to go with Black Widow. Now, this is another example of an amazing death scene that was really good. She, upon learning that someone has to throw themselves off of a cliff to, and to, to, to get the Soul Stone, Hawkeye and Black Widow fight over it. In the end, it looks like Hawkeye is one, and he jumps off. Then Black Widow grabs him, uses a grapple, and then, and then attaches him to the grapple. So he's stuck there, and while he's holding her, he ends up. Uh, I mean, she ends up pushing away from him and dying upon impact, giving him the Soul Stone. One of the worst things about this scene is seeing Hawkeye's face at the time, and this, basically every single one in this. Every single one of these deaths, I doubt there was a dry eye in the theater. Unless you're some unless you somehow can handle these deaths in such a way I cannot I just I crumple at them so often. Well not the ones I've seen so many times, like Tony Stark's death. Uh I've seen that one roughly a thousand times. Same with Black Widow because I watched Avengers Endgame over a thousand times at least. Because I, I see that one a lot. But this one is just so sad, which I probably should put Yondu's over this, but Black Widow, I, I've i seen a lot longer, so 
she ended up making it. Okay, and but coming in first place in the saddest MCU death of all time is going to be Iron Man. Now, he's not my favorite hero of all time. That one is reserved for Captain America, but I still really enjoy him. His sacrifice for the entire world and for the entire universe is amazing. The fact that he kills himself by snapping his fingers uh, with the Infinity Stones, with the immortal he is, he's not uh, strong enough. His body wasn't able to withhold all the energy, which ends up killing him. You can see right here. You can see him. And I am Iron Man. Now you can see that part of, like half of him was completely disheveled and destroyed. It's because you're seeing what the Infinity Stones effect is having on him. So it's really sad. And then he refuses to die until... Pepper says the few words of We're gonna be okay. You can rest now. Now it's really sad to see Iron Man's light go out. There, ha there couldn't have been a dry eye in the theater for this one. Everyone had to have been crying. I, I mean, I the first time I watched this, I couldn't stand this. I knew Iron Man was going to die because I already heard it, but didn't make it all any better. And it's just so, it's just so sad to see the reaction of everyone. Morgan, uh, Pepper, Peter. Also, uh, it's also amazing in the, I think it was a deleted scene, but in one scene... All the Avengers, everyone, Doctor Strange, Star-Lord, Captain America, Hawkeye, he was the first one to do it, but they end up taking a knee to him and bowing their heads, except for Gamora because she didn't know him, she just like walked away. It, but this, it was so sad, and this is easily the most noble sacrifice of all time. Thank you guys for watching this. Like and subscribe if you want to, it's completely up to you. And share your picks for what you think are the top five saddest deaths in the MCU in the comments below. I wanted to do T'Challa, but the fact that his was off screen, I just didn't really like that. So I put him, I decided not to mention him. Although Chadwick Boseman's death was very sad for a lot of people, including me. I loved seeing his portrayal of Black Panther and just the way it played out. Well, see you guys in my next video and what should my next ranking be? Have a good one.